Now that we have DHCP services working here and our clients have picked up IP addresses, let's move to the next server that I want to deal with. Let's talk about the web server. So we'll go over here down to our web slash FTP server and we'll select that server and we'll go over here and we'll look at the config HTTP which is our web server and you can see that by default the web server is on and this is our home page. Notice file name index.html. Index.html is usually a home page on an Apache web server, let's say. And so we have our little web server here with an index.html page. Now, I'm going to change the page so we know that this is um, a different web server than the other servers. So what I'll do is, is I'll say I'm going to highlight Cisco Packet Tracer right here and I'll put welcome to danscourses.com. All right? And I'll change that. Okay, so it says welcome to danscourses.com up here at the top. And now, if this is truly working here, right? If this web server is working and we're all connected, we should be able to close this, go to PC1 and put in the IP address of the web server. Now the IP address of the web server is 192.168.1.253 so I'll open up the web browser and I'll put in the IP address here 192.168.1.253 I'll hit enter and you can see we pick up my web page. This is my web server. Welcome to dancecourses.com Okay, great. So we picked up the web page but if I close this window and I open up this web browser, I want to be able to go to straight away to danscourses.com. If I hit enter, you can see host name unresolved. So when I put in danscourses.com, I don't get the web page. Well, why is that? If I put in the IP address it worked, It worked fine with the IP address in the URL in the address bar, but not with the name. Well, that's because we need a DNS server configured that's going to resolve the name danscourses.com to this IP address 192.168.1.253. And so that means we need to set up DNS services, which is what we're going to do next, so that people on the network, if they put in danscourses.com, can resolve that name to IP address. So what I'll do is I'll just close this and we'll go back up to our DNS DHCP slash DNS server up here and we'll configure our DNS server. So I'll click DNS and you can see here the DNS server is on by default. It's just waiting for us to create some records. So the first record we'll create is an address record for dancecourses.com. So I'll type in dancecourses.com here and we want an address record, an A record and I need to put the IP address that this is, this is going to resolve to. All right, 192.168.1.253. I'll click Add, and now we have an A record. All right, perfect. But what if somebody wants to resolve www.dancecourses.com? For that, we'll create a CNAME record. So we'll put in here www.dance courses.com and that's going to resolve to danscourses.com. So if somebody wants to put in an alias like www.danscourses.com, it will resolve to the domain name. I'll click add and now we have a CNAME record. Okay, we're not done yet though. Let's set up a few more records. Now if we're going to be the authoritative, let's say, DNS server, for danscourses.com, then we're going to need to be a name server. So we'll put in an NS record. An NS record, we'll say, is ns1.danscourses.com. So name server one, ns1.danscourses.com, will be, the, let's say, the definitive name server for this domain name. And this resolves to the server name. Now the server name on this server is, if we go to settings, 
server-dhcp-dns. So we'll just put that in there. Whoops, we've got to do that again. NS record, ns1.danscourses.com, resolving to the server, server-dhcp-dns. That's the name of our server. We'll click Add. So now we have an NS record, or name server record. Now if we're also truly the authority for this domain, we're going to need a start of authority record. Start of authority record is needed if you're the authoritative domain server. So we'll give it a name here, danscourses.com. The primary, we'll say no, name ns1. Dot, no, 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 danscourses.com, primary server name, ns1.danscourses.com. Mailbox, we'll say webadmin.dans courses.com and then we need to fill in some other record. Let me stretch this out so you can see this. Okay, minimum time to live, minimum TTL. We're going to put in some default values here. 3600, retry time, 600, typical values, refresh time, 3600, and expiration time, we'll say 86400. And we have that up, our mailbox, who we're going to contact, the administrator, primary server name, ns1.dancecourses.com, and then the name for the record up here. We'll click Add, and now we have all of our records here. We can stretch this out so you can see it. Okay, so now we have some name server records for our server. Now to test this out, we can go over to the client again, and we can run some tests. We'll go to the command prompt, and we'll type in ns lookup. We'll hit enter. You can see the server that it is right here. And we'll say danscourses.com. And you can see the non-authoritative answer coming, and it should be authoritative, for danscourses.com is 192.168.1.253. So it worked. danscourses.com resolves to this IP address, which is what we were hoping for. We wanted it to resolve to 192.168.1.253. Okay, so now what we can do is we can also test it in the web browser. Now before we couldn't put the name in to get to the web page, but now we should be able to. We'll type in danscourses.com and hit enter, and we get to the web page. We can also put in www.danscourses.com and hit go, and that also resolves to the web page. So our DNS server is working, and it's resolving DNS requests for danscourses.com and pointing us to this web server over here. So the requests go this way and then lead us over here. So that worked out pretty good.